Hello class, uh, today we're going to talk about elements of composition and I just want to leave you with some pretty strong dialogue about very, very important points when creating an illustration and I want you to take these away, I want you to internalize them and I want you to use them as your guide and uh, roadmap when creating an illustration or any composition, whether it's painting uh, drawing, something you're going to create with uh, type and design, these elements stand true and uh, the, you should internalize them as I said and uh, make them your own. And I'm going to hit on some big ones and I'm going to list them at the end and uh, we'll, we can then follow up in conference and uh, talk about them further if you'd like. But I'm going to touch on uh, some very very important ones and one of them it happens to be the rule of thirds and that is breaking up any shape into uh, one-third parts so uh, I put this one up by uh, Fedor uh, Rohankowski uh, mainly because one of our friends in class has been doing a uh, piece on the three Billy Goats gruff and uh, Fedor happened to do a version that I really liked and um, I wanted it to be uh, seen by the class and here you can see the rule of thirds in use uh, especially at this horizon line where the tree is uh, that's one third down from the top and the lower two thirds being the grassland and Fedor is also uh, incorporating uh, foreground middle ground and background very clearly uh, we get an essence of uh, the large goat in front even though he is the biggest he's also the closest even though there is no overlap none of these goats overlaps the other goat however we do understand that this big billy goat in the front is closest the one in the middle is just a little further back and of course the littlest goat is over there right on the horizon line so Fedor is using the rule of thirds and also four middle and background so we move on this also uh, by Jack Hogan uh, Vetriano uh, he was born Hogan but he changed his name to Vetriano and I'm sure you've probably seen his work in just about every Applebee's or Red Lobster that's out there um, I think one of his most famous pieces is people dancing on uh, the strand uh, with the tide coming in in formal clothing um, also I believe he's got some with people with umbrellas on the beach but uh, Jack is also using the rule of thirds here and if we look the woman's head is basically breaking up the first third it's dead center on that third line and then uh, the big light area of the window being the second um, two-thirds he's also using some basic shapes here squares and a triangle squares rectangles and a triangle and that is something you should consider doing which is breaking your space into some very basic geometric forms and uh, developing your compositions from there uh, Jack also is using a light and dark contrast um, the the woman's obviously in um, dark contrast to the outside window uh, she has a rim light where you just see it on her cheek excuse me cheek her chest and her forearm line it's a very very light line compared to her uh, the mass which is a darker uh, hue uh, Mitchell Hooks, uh, he ha is also using a um, very geometric element here. If you want to, I, I would almost say this is an L shape. The uh, retriever there being the foot of the L and then the man himself being the uh, vertical part of the L. He's also using uh, foreground and background distant. Uh, the ducks coming in behind this fellow are in the background and they recede in space 
However, uh, he's definitely right up in the forefront. Um, he's also using something that is very important to think about, which is a low horizon line. You want either low or high horizon lines. Do not put your horizon lines dead center. Uh, that makes for a very boring uh, bisected image. Uh, contrasting the low horizon line is uh, this Philip Harrison Hayes piece of a young woman in the in the uh, lawn there and if you look at the top there the horizon line is way up there it's in the top one twelfth of the uh, piece there is definitely foreground middle ground background going on uh, the very little overlapping though but we we do get that sense of deep deep space going going behind there but the high um, horizon line is what I wanted you to look at in this one. Here is a very early Norman Rockwell from the 19, I think it's 1919, it's called Looking Out to Sea. And I've pulled this for a number of reasons, and one of them is obviously foreground and background. Uh, Norman has uh, placed his characters right up front, they're darker than the sky, they definitely pop. Uh, one thing I do want you to look at is that this is practically a true yin-yang shape going on here with the swirl. The light sky swirls down uh, and begins to wrap into where the dog and the boy are. And then the, the boy and the grandfather are wrapping up into the sky. So there's definitely yin-yang going on, light dark. Get out, get out, get out. I had to chase my dog out. Um, oh, she's back. Okay, so as far as Norman Rockwell goes, um, this piece is uh, very strong. It's It's got all the elements, and um, it should be emulated. Frank Frazetta, whose uh, big, big thing was, if you look at a lot of the old heavy metal uh, album covers, uh, Frank was big. Uh, this is a cover from Creepy Magazine in 1972, I think. And uh, this I wanted to show you because Frank really employs triangles very heavily. Uh, a lot of his work is based on the triangle. And uh, it's so obvious here. If you miss the triangle, I am not going to explain any further. Um, it is so obvious. And not only that, Frank also employs the use of the letter form. And if you look, the letter form, what is a triangle with a horizontal bar? It's the letter A, capital letter A. It's right there, and it's very familiar to us, and it's very pleasing to us. We see it as a, a very strong, uh, anchored type of um, compositional element. It's worthy of emulating also. Uh, also, look, Frank has a low horizon line here. Um, the sky comes all the way down below the, um, the stand that the executioner is standing on. Uh, David A. Hardy. Uh, this piece is a science fiction piece called Skiing on Europa, which is uh, one of the moons, I think, of Jupiter. But I wanted to show you this uh, because here there is an uh, element of balance going on. We have two-thirds on the left, one-third on the right, three characters on the left, one character on the on the right. However, they seem to be in balance with each other, and the fulcrum uh, being centered on the seam. It works. Uh, I was going to uh, ding this on having a middle ground uh, horizon line, but as I thought about it further, the horizon line is actually low here because we are looking up a hill towards the skier. And the actual horizon line would be over the top of that hill and down more horizontal. So I'm going to uh, let uh, David get away with it here. This one I'm very, very impressed with, and it is by a cosmonaut named General uh, Vladimir uh, Dehan Bekov. Excuse me, I'm murdering that, that Russian name, but uh, he was actually a cosmonaut in um, 
I guess, in the Soyuz capsule. And uh, he, he did a drawing of a crisis in space. Now, this I've also put in because of keeping in mind, as, as the last one, the last piece, the idea of the seam, the center seam of the spread. You notice that there is no real action going on where the magazine folds. Likewise, in this one, there is no real action going on in the fold of the magazine. This is from National Geographic, and um, all the action is on the left-hand side. Likewise, uh, the use of the circle is being used as a compositional theme. If you can see, I'm going to drag my mouse out here. I'm not sure if it's going to show up all that well. But the circle that is made by all these objects kind of leading your eye down and into the uh, Soyuz capsule um, or the uh, space space uh, satellite. And we look at where the uh, cosmonauts are working. So I just thought this was a fantastic piece for a, someone who would be an untrained illustrator. And also I'm sure National Geographic was very impressed also because they used it. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with is uh, being aware of doing master's copies. Um, find fantastic pieces of work, and I want you to be sure to copy them for the elements that you may learn from them. Uh, these are not copies to copy and then sign your name and say hey look at this great thing I did no these are copies so that you will learn stroke by stroke what these masters did and why um, why they did it um, this happens to be a piece by John Singer Sargent American painter uh, he was actually more European than American he, he lived in Europe all his life um, however I, uh, I really did like this piece, and so I, I copied it, and my piece is different, and, uh, but there are elements to it that I, I really did learn quite a bit. Um, as you can see, his is much more masterful. Uh, mine's a little more sloppy, a little more rigid, but uh, I picked up quite a bit from uh, copying his work. This piece uh, sits in my studio in a shelf, and it is not framed. It's I, I don't consider it mine, but I do consider uh, it a, a lesson that I took. I copied his piece to learn from. So, um, compositional elements for you to remember as illustrators going into the field and as uh, image creators going into the field. I don't consider uh, everyone necessarily uh, going out there and becoming an illustrator however you can learn these compositional elements and use them in everything from photography to typography and um, every image in between and that is be aware of the rule of thirds um, use it to your your great advantage uh, the horizon line high and low just don't center it make it high make it low not in the middle uh, overlap items please please overlap uh, make one thing in front of the other. Uh, depth of space is created when you overlap. There's a foreground, a middle ground, a background. Uh, use those to your advantage. Bring the viewer in. Let Create pathways within those regions. The balance. Uh, the fulcrum and weight. There is a center or a, a point of balance where something heavy and something light can actually be balanced depending on where that fulcrum is uh has got its pivot so be aware of that pivot and uh you, you can balance that with your composition uh contrast light and dark we talked about that yin yang of uh, uh light and dark going on in that norman rockwell piece be aware of contrast uh the jack uh Vellantro piece uh, excuse me vetriano piece that was um the young lady in front of the window she's very dark the window's very light be aware of the gutter as you get uh, into the idea of your pieces being used for spreads. The gutter becomes, uh, in a lot of ways, your enemy. And you must be aware not to put anything important in that fold. Uh, give it enough space, uh, whether it's just using filler or uh, other, other designy elements. But don't put important things 
such as everybody looking at something in someone's hand, but that hand happens to be down in the seam of the magazine. Please, uh, you're, you've got to be very aware of this when it also comes to children's books. Children's books are often spreads, so be aware of the gutter. And finally, master studies. Uh, look through, find those master studies, and execute them. Do your best. Find out what they did, why they drew it that way, and how you can adjust your style or your particular uh, design ideas to fall in line with these previous greats that went before us. There's always something to learn from uh, a great study. So anyway, I wish you well and thanks so much.